Cellular respiration is the process in which glucose is broken down to release energy. Now that energy is used to drive the ATP cycle and produce ATP. And of course ATP is that universal energy currency in all organisms. So glucose and other high energy uh, organic compounds like fats and proteins are broken down to drive the ATP cycle. I'm going to talk to you about the um, aerobic respiration. Aerobic means with oxygen. So this process I'm going to talk to you about today or in this lesson is aerobic respiration and in another video I'm going to talk to you about anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic means without oxygen. So interestingly the first step in the process is the same for both aerobic and anaerobic and that is a process called glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell and it converts glucose into pyruvic acid or otherwise known as py pyruvate. Uh, so glucose is a six carbon sugar and it splits it into two three carbon sugars called pyruvate. So these uh, two, so basically this process then is repeated or it's duplicated so once for each of the pyruvates. Now in this process there's a little bit of ATP that gets produced so we've got two ATP molecules that get produced but more importantly what happens is that high energy electrons are released from the glucose because the breaking down of glucose and cellular respiration is an oxidation reaction. Oxidation is loss of electrons so the energy released from glucose is in the form of high energy electrons and those high energy electrons are then transported all the way over here to this last part of the process called the electron transport chain. I'll give you more details of that later but um, it's, it's really at this point here that the energy is taken out of the high energy electrons and that really drives the production of the ATP. So the intermediate processes here are really about taking the electrons over to the electron transport chain. So it's oxidation of glucose that releases high energy electrons and those electrons are actually transported along with a hydrogen um, atom because hydrogen is one proton one electron so um, essentially what's being tra transported is a hydrogen uh, and so and it's transported so the electrons are transported as NAD, NADH as NADH so basically NADH is purely an electron transport. It takes, the, it takes the high energy electrons to where they're required in another part of cellular respiration. So just look at it like that. So glycolysis happens in the, in the cytoplasm, happens in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So in other words, oxygen is not required for this process. A small amount of ATP is produced, but more importantly, we're starting to produce some high energy electrons that will be taken over to the electron transport chain. The pyruvate then goes into this thing here which is called a mitochondrion. So mitochondria is the plural, mitochondrion is the singular. So we go into the mitochondrion then for the next part of the process and that's got two names, it's either called the Krebs cycle or it sometimes is also called the citric acid cycle or TCA cycle, so <laughs> lots of names for it. Uh, and so that's a whole heap of steps. One of the byproducts of the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, is carbon dioxide. And we know, of course, that carbon dioxide is one of the products of cellular respiration. That's where it comes from. This process produces a wee bit more ATP but more importantly it produces more high energy electrons and those high energy electrons are transported over to the electron transport chain via NADH.
So the inputs for the last stage, which is called the electron transport chain, sometimes we just call it ETC, the inputs for that are these high energy electrons but that have been transported via NADH to the electron transport chain. Another really important input here is oxygen, and I'll reveal why in just a moment. The electron transport chain is a series of reactions that step down the energy in the high energy electrons to lower and lower levels. And in that process, what it does is drives the ATP cycle and produces a significant amount of ATP. In fact, it produces at, at, at the absolute um, most efficient it can be 34 ATP. So really this is the payoff from all of this complexity and all of this work here. Um, this is where you get the ATP being produced. The important input here is oxygen. This is the only place that oxygen is required at the very end of the process. But importantly, if, if there's no oxygen available, the process can't go past glycolysis. And the reason for that is because the oxygen mops up these high energy electrons and hydrogens at the very end of the electron transport chain. And they mop up the hydrogen because of course hydrogen and oxygen produces water. So our output here as well as all of this ATP is water. And that explains why one of the products of uh, cellular respiration is water. So oxygen is really super important because you can't prog pro um, progress past glycolysis and be producing these high energy electrons unless you've got oxygen to be able to mop them up at the end. So look, that's aerobic respiration. There's a few steps. It's more complex than this even. But you need to know that there's three parts to it. We've got glycolysis first, then we've got the second which is the Krebs cycle, and finally the third part is the electron transport chain. Uh, ultimately, the, the, the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain occur in the mitochondria. Uh, and really importantly we need to know that um, cellular respiration is oxidation of glucose and that means oxidation is loss of electrons so glucose releases its energy in the form of high energy electrons and that it does that through these uh, series of reactions here and ultimately it drives the ATP cycle to produce ATP which then is used in all of our cellular processes that's the aerobic respiration